Hey, Micro Church. My name is Chris Quinto. It's great to be back with you again as we jump into the letter that Peter wrote uh, to Christians in the first century. And so we're going to be in 1 Peter over the next several weeks. So uh, I'm excited for you to join with me. So today, as we jump in, uh, we're going to read the first two verses of this letter that Peter wrote. Uh, and then we're just going to talk a little bit about why he wrote it and things like that before we dive in to the letter. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 say this. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. So Peter first and foremost identifies himself as the one who is writing. This is Peter, the one who was called Simon that Jesus called. He was a fisherman. He was one of the 12 original disciples who later became apostles upon seeing Jesus resurrected. Uh, this is Peter, the one who walked on water. This is Peter who denied Jesus three times. And this is Peter who Jesus restored uh, to fellowship with him and, and set him back on mission. So this is the, that same Peter. He was writing this book, this letter to Christians, to followers of the way. We see this here uh, as, G, as Peter calls these followers elect exiles of the dispersion. See, Christians at this point had been uh, persecuted, had been pushed out of their homes, and so they now they are dispersed out into the world. And, and Peter names some places, but those places aren't necessarily the thing that matters. What, what matters is what Peter sees in them and who Peter is calling out them out to be, right? Peter here says they are elect exiles. Peter is, is recognizing these followers of Jesus for who they are. They, they are people who have been called into the family of God, but they are not people who, were the, 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 this world is their home. This world is not their home. This world is not where they uh, will ultimately dwell for eternity. Uh, and so Peter is reminding them of this. He's helping them to recall this as he calls them elect exiles. Peter then goes on to say, um, God knew this. He knew that they would be uh, in this situation. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, verse 2 says, in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Peter is speaking to people who are in the midst of very deep and dark uh, oppression for their faith. People who, are, who have been pushed out of their homes, maybe pushed out of their families uh, because they are followers of Jesus. They are followers of the way. Peter is not talking to uh, modern day Christians in America necessarily who, are, uh, who, who, who claim the name of Jesus but then don't go live their lives for Jesus. Peter is talking to people who have sold their, out their lives for Christ, who are going to give everything that they have and everything that they are for Jesus. And so Peter here is acknowledging uh, who they are and what, where they have come from and what God is, is going to be doing with them. It says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and the sanctification of the Spirit, they are not who they are going to ultimately be. They are being sanctified by the Spirit that lives inside of them, that lives inside every believer upon their salvation uh, and for obedience to Jesus Christ for the sprinkling of the blood. Right? So we are sprinkled with Christ's blood That's, that cleanses us from our sin and that causes us to live and desire to live in obedience to Jesus because of who he is and what he's done. So we see here that Peter is writing to these, uh, these elect exiles, these followers of Jesus who are being uh, persecuted and being oppressed because of their faith. So for us today in our world, uh, this, this just reminds us who we are. It reminds us that we are also elect exiles, that we are people who are called to be separate from the world around us, that this place is not our home. And so as we walk through our daily life, as we do the things that God has called us to do, as we live for Jesus in our world today, we have to remember that this is not our home. And so as we walk through the difficulties and the hardships and all the things that we are called to do as followers of Jesus in this world, as we live as, peop as people who are his followers or following the example of Jesus, uh, we are going to look different and act different and talk different and think different than those around us. 
And that's a good thing, because that is what we are called to do as followers of Jesus. We are elect exiles. We are separate from this world. We have been called out. We are being sanctified. We are we're saved from our sin by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, and we are then called to live a life of obedience to him and for him. As Peter addresses these things, walking through this letter that he is writing to these Christians, we will be encouraged when we do face persecution or oppression, when things aren't working out for us the way we want them to, when things are difficult and life is hard, this is an encouragement to us. Peter is writing to these people. And so as we dig into this, we will see more of what Peter longs for us to be as followers of Jesus. Hope you'll join me as we walk through 1 Peter together. Thanks, Michael Church. We'll see you soon.